This is utterly ridiculous. Good afternoon. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just, just had a film and it came out of the corner and there this person was. We are eastbound and down Highway 58 um, in Oregon. We are loaded down with 40,000 pounds of copper wire, scrap copper wire, going to Phoenix. The ching laws are up, but I'm going to wait till we need them. The first few places were pretty packed. Um, you don't need it for this. I don't want to ruin my chains, so I'm not going to put them on. Might not put them on at all, but... Um, I will if I see the need. If I have to, I will. But when it's spotty like this, there's no, no need for the chains yet. Just end up eating the chains up. A lot of pack right there. So here comes the school bus. Check and see if he has chains on, which he does. See, this here, you should pull over, buddy. They all seem to be content going slow like that. Fine and dandy, but if you, you know, there's a law that no one pays attention to. If you've got five or more vehicles behind you, you should pull over to get out of the way. Junction and I went to 
go fly some planes over at the local RC park. And I was in the V, and I have snow tires for the V. Um, didn't have them on the vehicle. And I got over there to get off the highway and it goes uphill and then you kind of get up like up on top of a mesa if you will and then uh, up on top up there it was all snow covered for, for the most part it wasn't really cloud um, the hill going off of highway 32 was a north facing hill so it's kind of shaded meaningly that's where the snow lasts the longest anyway and it was lasting so I started climbing it and I was like oh man I'm not gonna make it I I was going pretty slow and I was right at the crest at the top and I got up there and just barely caught a little bit of asphalt here and there towards the top and was able to then make it on top. And then I drove over to the air park and flew and then when I left I made a bonehead move because the road veered to the right, to the left coming in, to the right going out. And I Instead of staying to the top in the oncoming traffic, it's a one-way road. Well, it's, a, it's a just a dirt road. There is, you know, it's going to make way for the other person if you have someone coming at you. Anyway, um, I was going around on the lower part, and I the stuff was too thick, and I just spun out. And the more I spun out, the more I went down into the right, which put me in deeper snow. And I was like bummed. It was in the evening. I was going to call my son-in-law to come get me, but I didn't want to bother him. Sorry about that. Um, it's like I put myself in there. Why would I? bother him to come get me out when I did to that to myself. So I um, dug out the snow in front of all the tires. I was able to throw some dirt in there. It was my third try. First two tries didn't make it. Third try finally did. Um, through a bunch of sand and stuff that I found and was able to get myself out of it. It's all part of living with this stuff. You know, if you get stuck, which if I, I could have gone through there without getting stuck, if I'd have done what I thought of the first time, and that would be riding up on top the oncoming side, because it's, the road sloped to the right. The road slipped to the right. Anyway, um, so I, I got myself out of there, but um, if I had to do it again, I, I would have stayed up to the left, rode up on top of that area, and got out of there just fine. I do hope to get around this four wheel that we're coming up on. So we're 40,000 pounds, it's 29 degrees now have the axle interlocked, but you can hear the road. It's kind of clumpy from chains. This weight and the fact that we're keeping a motion of movement forward. If I was to stop, I would have a real hard time getting going again without chains. The trick is to not stop. That could be a problem with this car coming up on.
I've done a quality driver, Doug. He was, uh, met me at where I picked up this stuff at, and he said he was going to go down to five, and I go, I'm not. I'd rather deal with this than this and the five. My tripod is collapsing. This is a passing lane, but I can't get up in front of him, and he's taking off. That's what was going on. My tripod was collapsing. I thought it was a lake, but it's actually the center expansion area. for a while. Now is where this car will slow down. Set all up 
open arms to pump their own gas. The rest of the country was like looking at them one raised eyebrow like you serious? Like they were coddled. Anyway, um, they still, there still is places here that I think they still do that. And that's fine. Great jobs, you know. It's, I have no problem paying extra to have someone do that. I also paint my own, or paint, that's not, I also pump my own gas. Always have, always will. It's 24 degrees, so it's gotten better because we've gone up in altitude. Look, so we have about 40,000 pounds, just a little under, but we are heavy. Keeps us planted. It's beautiful up here right now. See, I was coming up on a hill, so I was going as fast as I could. That way, when I hit the hill, I have momentum. So yeah, going to Phoenix. I don't. I think he was going to do it a different way. I don't know if he's going to change his mind or not. But my my main focus is getting over the mountains. Get onto the eastern side. Get over there by Reno. Take the Nevada desert all the way to Arizona. But we gotta go through this before we can do that. So no matter which way you go, you're gonna deal with snow when you cross the mountains. I was thinking about doing it up there by Portland, going around Mount Hood. And I usually, well, every time I've been on this particular highway has been at night. drag chain on the trailer keeps the, tra the trailer from trying to pass you. Um, never use them in Colorado. California, Oregon, and Washington, the left states, or the west, sorry, the west, left side of the United States. They all require drag chains. I don't know why. I mean, and I, and I think it's for going downhill when you actually only need chains to go uphill. You don't need them to drive on level roads. You don't need chains to drive on going downhill. Gravity will get you moving. But when you start to climb, that's when you need those chains for grip you know, spin out. I don't like these blades. Eh? A driver's blade builds up. It used to be 
able to reach out there and slap my uh, blades to shake them off. Can't do it anymore because of the fairings they have. I would do the same thing if I was traveling along and I had a bunch of people behind me and I wasn't planning on doing any bit further and they were catching up I would or still there I would find a place to pull over like FedEx just did let people get around here in the sunshine. Narrow road. <laughs> if I do say so myself. 
myself. They need to get up here with the blowers and trim the edges. So, I would have put chains on had I needed them. We didn't even spin a wheel at 40,000, well, 74 or 5. Fun at night, less traffic. I'd like to think that, but as far as less traffic, there we go. Couldn't get the streaks to get off my windshield from the blades. So we'll probably hit snow in California. Um, but it's so urban, they won't be closing the highway down to allow for CDOT to inspect each vehicle before they're given permission to go for further. Abide by what they tell you or you're hindered from moving, which seems kind of illegal. another reason I chose to go this way because for the most part you kind of have to go through California a little bit unless you go further out of your way to avoid California then it's longer in time I had 25 and a half hours and it's about 20 hours to get from Portland to Phoenix. So I'm going to have to run recap hours. It's about five, five and a half hours from Phoenix to San Bernardino. And that'll put me just about right. Friday, what is today? Today's date is 28th, I believe. Yeah, 28th, end of the month. So, um, Tuesday the 28th. I'll recap hours on Friday. So I'm going to let Dan and dispatch know that I can run. If, if, when I unload Thursday with this load, if he gives me a load going from there or even deadhead to San Bernardino to pick up tires or Harbor Freight load or something else. I have enough time to get there and then leave Friday morning with the load. 
and recap towers. That I also want to send them a message that I'm going to run recaps so you can send me, hopefully, to Denver Junction or something. And then I can do a break at home. I just did one over the road. Um, it, it just worked out that way. It didn't really, it wasn't that I needed to. It was just the load picked up the next day at 9 p.m. And I said, well, that's before the snows, right before the snows started coming. And I was like, I'm going to, oh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. He's doing it, he's doing it. Just don't do it, let us go by. Talking about the Love's truck. Let us go through, please. You see vehicles coming like this, just let them go. You got a big old heavy truck. That's kind of the way it should be. Um, we just went through all that. Um, and I, I feel if you mess up and you cause a problem because you didn't have your chains on, then you should pay a high price. But if you know how to drive on this stuff, then, you know, why can't I just keep moving into free country? And if I mess up, I'll be the first one to say, okay, I'll pay the high fine. But I wouldn't do that because if it got to that point, I know when I should be chaining up. I used to train people up in the mountains a little bit. I'd say, if you ever see me put chains on, I advise to do the same thing. But usually rookies will do that because you, I did. I chained up all the time. You get on a nice road like this and you turn left like where this forerunner is going and then you go up into the hills. You know, with a 50,000 pound truck. start learning how to do it and then you start going the whole season man I went all winter and never chained up I did it and it's not like you're trying to play super trucker it's just the fact that um, you know how to move the vehicle around you, know? you get stuck because you don't have chains on that's the secret you don't get stuck I'm not, like I said, I'm not opposed to putting chains on. I don't want anybody saying all kinds of stuff. I have no problem throwing them on. But, also, if I don't think I have to, I shouldn't be forced to do it. We just went through that. There's not so much as a, even a hiccup. Not one single solitary spin, even for a half a split microsecond. Nothing. And then as far as having a heavy load like this and then trying to stop quick, you're not going to be able to. 
So therefore you <laughs> look far ahead in front of you and make sure everything's going good. Like this guy here, he's cruising right along. I'll stay my distance away from him. If I see lights come on and blinkers flipping, I will bring her down quick. There's room for me to get around him, and he's going to be, even if he stops completely, which he'll probably end up doing, then we can still get around him like so. Beautiful. We don't need that anymore. I got my... Uh, Axle interlock still on. Can turn that off. It's summertime again. Yeehaw. Now we should be close to the 97, which is four lanes, which is nice. I don't want to get stuck doing 20 miles an hour behind somebody who is deathly afraid. Driving on snow. Looks good. We'll see you in a bit. I suppose we'll just end this video here. Um, get some more fun stuff to drive on. We'll just start another video. Need to get the ones I have posted up. Collecting in my phone and slowing my memory down. Slowing the phone down. I need to upload and delete. Anyway, we'll get on that. Thanks again for riding shotgun with Mountain Man Mike. Till next time, enjoy.